Hi and welcome back to my channel Microbiology Simplified. In this third part of Rapid Review Microbiology, I have discussed important topics of virology. So I have discussed 16 questions in 30 minutes. So just go through it and you will be able to revise the important topics. So let's start with the video. So first MCQ. Regarding HIV, which of the following is not true? It is a DNA virus, contains reverse transcriptase, may infect host cell other than CD4 plus T lymphocyte causes a reduction in host cells, CD4 cells at late stage of disease. So which is not true. So we will see the first option. It is a DNA retrovirus. Though it is a retrovirus, but it is not a DNA virus. It is a RNA virus, single stranded RNA virus. It is not a DNA virus. It is a RNA virus. Okay. Uh, it is correct that it contained the reverse transcriptase enzyme. Other enzyme which is present along with reverse trans transcriptase are protease and integrase okay and may infect host cell other than cd4 plus t lymphocytes yes that is true it may infect other cells too that we will see in the discussion and causes reduction in host cd4 cells yeah, cd4 uh, plus t helper cells are the primary target for hiv okay so it will lead to reduction of, of the host cd4 cell at a late stage of disease so the answer to this question is a it is not a dna retrovirus <coughs> so we will see the discussion hiv as i told you it is a retroviridae and belongs to lentivirus subgroup it belongs to family retroviridae lentivirus subgroup morphologically it is spherical and it is enveloped virus and it contains two identical single strand rna which is positive sense and also it contains reverse transcriptase enzyme so it is single strand RNA and there are two identical copies are present in the genome and it is it also contains reverse transcriptase enzyme okay and there are two major enveloped proteins those are GP120 and GP41 remember these two major enveloped protein of HIV GP120 and GP41 okay so if you see this image you can see the GP120 is basically present on the outer surface whereas this GP41 is transmembrane okay it is transmembrane so transmembrane is GP41 and present on the outer surface is GP120 you can also see the nucleocapsid which contains the viral <coughs> genome which, and you can see the two copies of RNA viral genome okay and this nucleocapsid is divided into a shell and a core antigen. The shell antigen is P18 whereas core antigen is P24 and this P24 is very important in early diagnosis of HIV infection okay and it also contains the reverse transcript enzymes integrase and protease as I told you okay so remember these things. Now the pathogenicity pathogenicity if you see the cell receptor what is the receptor the receptor is any cell bearing the cd4 antigen any cell bearing the cd4 antigen and apart from this t cell what are the cell which bear that cell b cell also bear it monocytes macrophage macrophage including alveolar macrophage and langerhans cells glial cells microglial cells in the cns also bear the cd4 antigen and follicular dendritic cells although these follicular dendritic cells do not bear cd4 antigen okay they don't have this cd4 antigen but they can be affected by the hiv okay and there are two step in pathogenesis first is binding and second is fusion binding is mediated by gp120 whereas fusion is mediated by gp41 enveloped protein the gp120 and gp41 and there are certain co-receptor which is required for binding those are cxcr4 and ccr5 those hiv strains jo hiv strains cxcr4 ke liye uh, ko use karte hain those are called as t cell tropic hiv strains t cell tropic hiv strains and those which utilizes ccr4 co-receptors are called as macrophage tropic hiv strains so this T cell tropic also known as X4 and macrophage also known as R5 and those who are dual tropic that both T cell tropic and macrophage tropic strains those are known as R5 X4 strains okay remember this. Now immunological abnormalities which can be seen in HIV infections so first is lymphopenia reduction in the count of lymphocytes obviously 
and selective T cell deficiency, reduction in number of CD4 cells and inversion of T4 is to T8 ratio. Okay. There is reduction in CD4 and inversion of the ratio of T4 is to T8 and also there is decrease in delayed type hypersensitivity, polychronal activation of B cells which will lead to hypergamma globulinemia, predominantly IgG and IgA. IgM also affected only in children's, okay, so predominantly which is increased IgG and IgA, IgM only in children's, okay. And decreased cytotoxic response by T cell and NK cell and decreased antibody response to new antigen by the B cells, okay. And altered monocyte micro macrophage function and elevated level of immune complex in the serum, okay. Because of hyper, which is this is related with the hypergammaglobinemia, the immune complex in the serum, altered monocyte macrophage function, decreased antibody response. This is also because of this decrease in the helper T cell, selective T cell deficiency, okay. And then decreased cytotoxic response by T cell and NK cell. So these are the immunological abnormalities which can be seen in HIV infection, okay. So HIV virus is a single standard, single standard RNA or DNA, it is single standard RNA but there are two identical copies, remember this, two identical copies, okay. Now identify the organism, what we can see in this image, we can see this GP120 and GP41, apart from this what we can see this viral RNA genome. In the given question, herpes, adeno and hepatitis, these three are DNA viruses, okay. So, but the only RNA virus is HIV in the option, so this is the correct answer. And also you can see the confirm the uh, answer by seeing the envelope protein GP120 and GP41, okay. So, CMV retinitis in HIV occurs when CD4 count falls below 50, 100, 200, 150. So, to the answer this question, let's see this bar diagram taken from Harrison, okay. So, what you can see here? This first two, this HSV and herpes juster, these two infections, this two opportunistic infection usually occur when the count is uh, more than 250, okay. So this is, if it is 250, this is 150 and this is 50, okay. So it is between 250 to around uh, 350 for this uh, herpes simplex, 350 to 250. This is around 250 to 200 and then, then this, this will be these four that is cryptosporidiosis, carposis, sarcoma, uh, cryptococcal uh, meningitis and this candida infection. These two occur below 150, okay. And then pneumocystis uh, carnine pneumonia or pneumocystis zerovetsai pneumonia non unskilled lymphoma and AIDS dementia complex and then this progressive multifocal echoencephalopathy occurs below 100 these four okay and also this wasting syndrome and then this toxoplasma CMV secondary pneumocystis carnine pneumonia and this mycobacterium avium intracellular complex MAC complex okay this MAC complex these four occurs below 50. So you can take this graph as, an, uh, as a reference to answer these type of questions. So answer this question that CMV retinitis occurs when it is the CD4 counts fall below 50. Okay. Toxoplasmosis, uh, pneumocystis carnine pneumonia secondary and mycobacterium avium intracellular complex tuberculosis. This will occur also along with CMV below 50. Whereas below 100 PCP, NHL, DEM and PML and wasting syndrome. These occur below 100. Cryptococcal, Candida, uh, Cryptosporidiosis and carpal below 150. Between 200 to 250 herpes juster and between 250 to 350 herpes simplex. Remember it like this. Now regarding HIV infection, not true is P24 antigen is used for early diagnosis. Lysis of infected CD4 cell is seen. Dendritic cell do not support replication. Macrophage is a reservoir for the virus. So what we have seen, dendritic cell, the follicular dendritic cell, though they don't have CD4 cell, but they support replication. They can be infected. So answer C is correct. Though this is correct. Lysis of infected CD4 cells and we have seen that there is a severe T cell deficiency occur and there is inversion of T4 is to T8 ratio in HIV. So this is also correct that lysis of infected CD4 cell is seen. 
P24 is used for early diagnosis and macrophage is a reservoir for the virus. We will see these two options, whether these two options, which of them is correct. So for the lab diagnosis of uh, HIV, what we used to do, we used, we can do either viral isolation, we can do antibody detection or we can go for antigen detection. Antigen detection is usually done within uh, two weeks of infection. It can be done within two week, weeks of infection. It is the earliest test which can be done to diagnose the infection. And the first marker or earliest marker is P24 antigen. As I told you, the core antigen of nucleocapsid. Okay, P24 antigen is the earliest marker, the core antigen. Okay, and it disappears in few months and it may reappear in exacerbation. So, it will disappear after the appearance of P24 antibodies. So, it will appear and it will disappear in few months and then P24 antibody will present and during exacerbation of disease, it will again reappear. Antibody detection, it usually occurs 3 to 12 weeks after infection and the first antibody develop against GP41, okay, followed by antibody against P24, P55, GP120, P17, P31 and P66. The P31, P66 is basically the antigen for the polymerase gene. P24, the core antigen. P55 is the nucleocapsid antigen. And this GP120 is the enveloped protein. And P17 is again the shell antigen. Okay. So the first antibody appear against GP41. Okay. You will get a question on this too. And IgM disappear in around 8 to 10 weeks of infection. Okay. Now the detection of viral RNA for viral isolation can be done. This viral RNA can be detected by reverse transcriptase PCR, by branch DNA test, by transcription mediated amplification, by nucleic acid sequence based amplification and also can be done by DNA PCR. Among these, all of them, so the, these can be done in routine diagnostic test for detection of the viral uh, DNA. Uh, sorry, viral RNA. This viral DNA, pro-viral DNA, DNA PCR can be done in the reference laboratory and it is highly sensitive, okay. But in routine, which we will test, we will do, we will do reverse transcriptase PCR for detection of viral RNA, okay. <coughs> so, what should be the answer to this question? So, the macrophages, as we know that CD4 cells, CD4 cells are the reservoir of the virus HIV, okay. But apart from this, the monocyte macrophage lineage system, monocyte macrophage lineage system, can also act as a reservoir for the virus. So, this answer is also correct. <coughs> and this P24 is used for a diagnosis. This is also correct. So, which is not true. The dendritic cell, as we have seen, dendritic cell, though they don't contain the P24 uh, CD4 cell antigen, but they support replication. So, this is incorrect. Initially, I read it that it support replication, but here it is mentioned, do not support replication. So, under this question is, Dendritic cells do not support replication. This is not correct. Dendritic cells support replication. Okay. HIV can be detected and confirmed by then what should be the answer? Polymerase chain reaction, reverse transcriptase PCR, real time PCR, mimic PCR. So, what should be the answer? Reverse transcriptase PCR as discussed. Okay. A 40 year old nurse who work in the clinic shows up and asks for an HIV test. She was pricked by a needle at work by an HIV positive patient. Which of the following will analyze or Western blot discover antibodies against first? So, the first antibody will appear against which antigen? It will against appear GP41. So, answer to the question is GP41. Which of the following hepatitis virus is likely to get transmitted via FECO oral route? Hepatitis virus via FECO oral route. So, among the given options, hepatitis B, D and C, these three are transmitted through blood and blood products. This hepatitis A and hepatitis E is transmitted through fecal-oral route, okay. So, this is the answer to this question. So, we will see various uh, viruses which can be transmitted through various modes of transmission. So, blood. 
ब्लड इज यूज एज अ मोजर ट्रांसमिशन फॉर हेपेटाइटिस बी सी हेपेटाइटिस डी एच आई वी एच टी एल वी वन सी एम वी ई बी वी एंड पार्वो वायरस बी नाइनटीन ऑल दो फॉर सी एम वी ई बी बी एंड पार्वो वायरस बी नाइनटीन दिस इज नॉट द प्राइमरी और पीडोमिनेट मोड ऑफ ट्रांसमिशन बट इट मे बी ट्रांसमिटेड थ्रू ब्लड ऑल्सो रिमेंबर दिस ओके फॉर फीकोरल रूट फॉर फीकोरल रूट एस्ट्रो वायरस हेपेटाइटिस ए एंड ई रोटा वायरस नोरो वायरस कैल्सी वायरस इंट्रो वायरस कोकसैकी वायरस पोलियो एडिनो पोलियोमा सी एम वी दीज कैन ऑल्सो बी ट्रांसमिटेड थ्रू फीकोरल रूट एन एयर बॉर्न इन्फ्लुएंजा वायरस राइनो वायरस मीजल मम्स एडिनो वायरस वी जेड वी एंड सर यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दिस लिस्ट सो बट देन यू नीड टू नो द इम्पॉर्टेंट वन फॉर फॉर ब्लड बॉर्न दीज आर द इम्पॉर्टेंट वन विच यू नीड टू रिमेंबर फॉर फीकोरल रूट दीज आर द इम्पॉर्टेंट विच यू नीड टू रिमेंबर ओके एंड फॉर एयर बॉर्न दीज आर द इम्पॉर्टेंट वन ओके अ प्रेग्नेंट वुमेन फ्रॉम बिहार प्रेजेंट विथ हेपेटिक इनकेफ्लोपैथी द लाइकली डायग्नोसिस इज हेपेटाइटिस ई हेपेटाइटिस बी सेप्सिस एक्यूट फैटी लिवर ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी हेपेटिक इनकेफ्लोपैथी इन प्रेग्नेंट वुमेन इट मे बी बिकॉज ऑफ एक्यूट फैटी लिवर ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी एंड इट मे बी बिकॉज ऑफ इन्फेक्शन ऑल्सो दैट इज हेपेटाइटिस ई बट एज इट इज मैंशन अ रीजन विच इज एन एन इंडेमिक एरिया फॉर हेपाटाइटिस ई so that's why the answer goes for this question goes to hepatitis e okay if it is not mentioned about uh, uh, any state that means it is not talking about any kind of infectious origin of disease so <coughs> that is why uh, the answer to this question hepatitis e normally in pregnant women we may find hepatic encephalopathy due to fatty liver of pregnancy okay so hepatitis e hepatitis e mostly affect young to middle aged adults that is 15 to 40 year old year old female and causes fulminant hepatic failure and maternal death during third trimester of pregnancy so it occur usually during third trimester of pregnancy and may lead to hepatic failure and maternal death and the mortality rate is around 15 to 25% especially in the endemic areas as as mentioned in the question and the genotype which is responsible it has got four genotype and genotype which is responsible mostly for this is genotype 1 the fatty liver pregnancy occurs during the third trimester of pregnancy or early postpartum so it may occur during the uh, third trimester or early postpartum and microvesicular fatty infiltration of hepatocyte without any inflammation or necrosis is seen in case in this case okay and mortality is may rise may goes up to 75 to 85% so it is highly uh, fatal disease which of the following is represent the zika virus vector aedes australis aedes micheli aedes albopictus aedes poli polinensiensis <coughs> so which is the do we know that zika virus transmitted through aedes but which aedes transmit the zika virus so aedes uh, which is responsible for transmission of zika virus is aedes albopictus and aedes aegypti okay which is also responsible for transmission of dengue virus okay so answer to this question is aedes albopictus or aedes aegypti okay so uh, option they may change in the future question that's why i mentioned both the name of species So Zika virus belongs to which family? Flavi virus, and it transmitted by Aedes mosquito. It can also be transmitted sexually and through blood transfusion. It present with arthralgia, myalgia, and lymphadenopathy, and mild fever. Rash is seen in this case, which is pruritic mac macular and papular erythema, and it begin on the trunk and descend to the lower body. Trunk में शुरू होगा, lower body तक descend करेगा, and also we can find conjunctival injection palatal petechi. so parietal pet petechi is a characteristic which is seen in zika virus illness during pregnancy may leads to birth defects such as microcephaly and neurological complications such as gulenberry syndrome may occur other complication which is seen in case of zika infection are meningitis meningoencephalitis uh, transverse myelitis peripheral uh, neuropathies and retinopathies okay now question number 11 condyloma a uh, condyloma acuminata is mostly caused by I said condyloma later. Condyloma, condyloma later. If you get in uh, in question about condyloma later, so this is seen in case of secondary syphilis. It is a mucocutaneous infection which occurs at the junction of mucocutaneous organ. It is highly infectious. 
okay it is highly infectious so now answer to this question this is condyloma acuminata condyloma acuminata is a tumor like lesion it is seen in case of human papilloma virus infection so which strain is mostly responsible for this we will see the discussion so human papilloma virus is a double stranded dna virus and it causes common warts which is also known as veruca vulgaris or plantar warts and it is commonly seen in hand and feet okay and especially in children and adolescents children and adolescents in hand and feet okay remember this and type 1 2 3 4 is commonly responsible for common warts now condyloma acuminata or acuminatum it is also known as genital wart and it appear as soft moist pedunculated wart in the external genitalia and the strain which is responsible commonly is type 6 and type 11 and it is transmitted sexually and it may turn malignant also intra epithelial neoplasia is also caused by type 6 and type 11 and cervical cancer is commonly caused by type 16 and type 18 and laryngeal esophageal cancer which is caused by human papilloma virus is commonly caused by type 16 18 30 31 33 51 53 and 53 so at least you remember this this condyloma acuminata and intra epithelial neoplasia is caused by 6 and 11 whereas the cervical cancer is commonly caused by 16 and 18 okay remember this and what are the other cancer can be caused laryngeal and esophageal cancer okay so answer to this question is 6 and 11 okay so you can see in this image this pedunculated stalk like holding this tumorous growth which is known as condyloma acuminata or genital wart and this is a common wart seen in finger known as veruca vulgaris a 2 year old 2 year old boy is brought to opd with complaints of fever ear pain and difficulty in swallowing for one week on examination there is testicular swelling and his jaw is shown below what is the most likely diagnosis infectious mononucleosis herpangina croup and mumps so this swelling this sub mandibular swelling indicates parotitis or parotid swelling and <coughs> along with that this patient is also suffering from testicular swelling okay so this indicate it is a case of mumps okay so why i am saying this so let's see the discussion of mumps so in mumps if you see it is a para a para mixo virus which possesses both h and that is hemagglutinin and neuraminidase receptor and f protein and transmission is through respiratory droplets and saliva clinical feature which we can see in case of mumps the incubation period is around 12 to 25 days and leads to parotid swelling that is known as parotitis okay and it is usually unilateral in start but may become bilateral late, later and it is non suppurative and the skin over the gland is not warm or erythematous so there is the skin is normal it is neither warm or erythematous remember this okay and it is non as it is non suppurative complication which may develop includes epididymo or kitis that is inflammation of epididymis epididymis or testis especially in post pubertal male or kitis is usually unilateral and meningitis may also occur meningoencephalitis may also occur and diagnosis can be done by i detection of specific igm analyzer okay so this is about a brief about mumps i am not going into too much detail just these are the important point which we need to know about the disease so remember this parotitis epididymo or kitis meningitis and meningoencephalitis in mumps okay a 13 year old girl has had four episodes of meningitis over the last four year with the disease lasting a few days at a time leaving slowly resolving neurological symptoms such as visual and memory loss a csf cytology shows lymphocytic pleocytosis and diagnosis of mollaret's meningitis is made which organism implicated here so the diagnosis made is mollaret meningitis so if you know that mollaret meningitis is caused by which virus you will be able to answer this question so what is mollaret meningitis mollaret meningitis is also known as a recurrent lymphocytic meningitis which resolves in a week so it is very recurrent it may occur once in a or twice in a year and it resolve within a week okay without usually any long term sequel and it is basically a aseptic meningitis with lymphocytic pleocytosis so the which cell is increased in this lymphocyte predominantly increased in this and it is commonly caused by herpes simplex virus 2 okay 
herpes simplex virus 2 and neurological symptoms which may occur such as confusion, altered consciousness but there is no long term sequel as I told you the neurological symptoms will uh, disorder will resolve and there is no long term sequel. <coughs> Apart from this, seizure paresthesia may also occur and cranial nerve palsies. Diagnosis can be done by HSV, detection of HSV antibodies and HSV DNA in CSF. Okay, So these two can be detected in CSF, HSV antibodies and HSV DNA. So what you need to remember, moderate meningitis is a recurrent meningitis. The recurrent meningitis, one or two episodes in a year which resolve in a week. It is basically lymphocytic meningitis and neurological symptoms usually resolve and diagnosis is made by detection of <coughs> HSV antibody and HSV DNA in CSF. Okay? Which of the following infection is linked with oral hairy leukoplakia? Oral hairy leukoplakia is seen in EBV. Okay? EBV is associated with oral hairy leukoplakia. So we will see shortly about EBV. EBV is also known as human herpes virus 4. Transmission is through salivary secretions. Remember this. Transmission of EBV is through salivary secretions. And the receptor for EBV which is present on B cell is CD21 receptor. CD21 receptor which is present on B cells. And memory B cells act as reservoir. Memory B cells act as reservoir. Okay. And the clinical feature which we can see in EBV is mainly infectious mononucleosis which which present with fever, sore throat and lymphadenopathy and abnormal lymphocyte which is basically T cells. These abnormal lymphocytes are basically T cells in peripheral blood smear can be seen and there is inversion of T4 is to T8 ratio as we have seen in case of HIV infection and EBV associated disease are non-Hodgkin lymphoma such as Burkitt lymphoma okay non-Hodgkin lymphoma such as Burkitt lymphoma T and B cell lymphoma, especially in immunodeficient pa patients, Hodgkin lymphomas, nasopharyngeal carcinoma, especially in people with Chinese origin, and Duncan disease, which is an X-linked lymphoproliferative disorder, X-linked lymphoproliferative disorder, and oral hairy leukoplakia, especially in HIV patients. Okay, and diagnosis is usually done by, <coughs> not usually, but can be done by Paul Bernal test. Which, in which we can demonstrate the production of heterophile antibodies due to polychronal anti activation of B cells which agglutinate the sheep erythrocytes and which and this heterophile antibodies it develops early and disappear in two months. So this test remains positive only for two months. After two months it will become negative. So how to diagnose ELISA can be done which can detect IgM viral capsid antigen. It is used to diagnose acute infection and it is elevated only during first one to three months. IgM, v, IgG, VCA, it is not used for diagnosing infectious mononucleosis. It is not useful. IgG, VCA is not useful for diagnosing infectious mononucleosis, but it can be used to assess past exposure. Okay, past exposure can be assessed. Okay, this anti EBNA that is Epstein Barr nucleic acid antibody, it usually detectable late that is after three to six weeks and then persist for lifetime so it is used for diagnosis along with IgM VCA for acute infection okay so this is about the diagnosis of EBV remember this IgM VCA viral capsid antigen viral capsid antigen okay so Epstein-Barr virus causes all of the following except infectious mononucleosis, yes, nasopharyngeal carcinoma in Chinese origin, yes, non-Hodgkin lymphoma, yes, measles, no. So it does not cause measles, okay. Virus causing hemorrhagic cystitis, diarrhea and conjunctivitis is, so which is of, which virus causes all of these hemorrhagic cystitis, diarrhea, conjunctivitis, so we will see the virus, the answer to this question is adenovirus, okay. Answer is adenovirus. Adenovirus causes all this and the syndrome which is seen in adenovirus is it is basically a non-enveloped double stranded DNA virus like human problem virus which is also double stranded DNA virus. Pharyngitis may occur. It is a non-bacterial pharyngitis and tonsillitis. It is one of the most common cause of non-bacterial pharyngitis and tonsillitis adenovirus. Okay. And type 127 is mostly commonly 
most commonly implicated for that and pneumonia type 3 and uh, type 3 and type 7 commonly causes pneumonia <coughs> in adults and it resemble primary atypical pneumonia okay primary atypical pneumonia whereas type 7 it occur in infant and young children and it is usually fatal pneumonia okay so infant young children type 7 adult type 3 and type 7 both it causes acute respiratory disease which is usually seen as an outbreak in military recruits and type 4, 7 and 21 is commonly <coughs> responsible for this. Pharyngeoconjunctival fever, it is basically a febrile pharyngitis along with conjunctivitis commonly caused by type 3, 7 and 14. And epidemic keratoconjunctivitis which is caused by commonly by type 8 but less often by type 19. Okay, So you can see here pharyngitis, pneumonia, conjunctivitis along with fever. An epidemic keratoconjunctivitis it can be caused by adenovirus. Apart from this, it can also cause acute follicular conjunctivitis, keratoconjunctivitis, pharyngoconjunctival fever, acute follicular conjunctivitis, so many involvement of conjunctiva. Okay. It is a non prevalent inflammation of conjunctiva. Okay. And there is enlargement of submucous lymphoid follicles. And along and, and the <coughs> and periauricular lymph node is also involved and type 3, 4 and 11 is commonly involved. It can also cause diarrhea okay and diarrhea is commonly seen in children and type 40 and 41 is commonly responsible for this and it is also responsible for acute hemorrhagic cystitis and the type 11 and 21 is responsible for this and it also leads to generalized exanthem. So many diseases can be caused by this adenovirus it's difficult to remember. But at least remember what is asked in the question that is conjunctivitis, hemorrhagic cystitis and diarrhea is seen in adenovirus and it also causes mesenteric adenitis okay along with intersusception in the children okay. So this is just a quick recap of virology I cannot say that this will complete the whole virology but at least you will get the important question previously asked in the FMG examination just go through it and just recall whatever you have read okay so all the best.